What's good, y'all? This is from the neighborhood, Michelangelo, aka Miguel Angelo. And today we will be interviewing the director of the brand new Barn the Dinosaur documentary called I Love You, You Hate Me. It's out right now on Peacock. Go check that out. But before you do, let me introduce you to Tommy Avalon. Do you think you could start by introducing yourself and telling people about uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Tommy Avalone. I'm the director of I Love You, You Hate Me. It's a really great documentary. I want to say that first and foremost. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. What brought you to it? Were you a Barney fan or what, what What made you want to watch it? For me, I'm just like interested in a lot of things about children's shows and everything like that. Okay. And I saw a couple Instagram posts and things about the doc and I thought it was a really cool idea. So I went and nice. checked it out and oh, I wanted to talk to you about it. In the beginning, it starts off with, in 1988, Cheryl Leach created a monster. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, not all monsters are bad, right? You know, you got Monster Zinc, you know, and who, who's to say Sully's a bad character or, uh, or Mike from uh, Monster Zinc. So she did create a monster, a monster in that this thing was everywhere. You know, it was a, a, a beast to be noticed. You know, it was something that you couldn't do anything without seeing a Barney somewhere, some way. Even if you had a, did not have a child, I mean, obviously if you had a child, it was there. But, you know, walking through anything, any sort of store, uh, you know, television, late night TV, people were making fun of it, mentioning it, bringing it up. It was just something that was always around, you know? So uh, for sure. And in so many ways, we actually kind of like made a comparison about like Frankenstein where it's like, you know, Frank and, uh, Dr. Frankenstein made this this monster uh, because he wanted to bring something to life. And people were so scared of it that it led to bad things. You know, in so many ways, Cheryl created this thing that wanted to teach you how to love. And it was our reaction, the fear of the word love, uh, maybe the color purple or whatever, that we just uh, kind of tried to burn it at the stake. <laughs> yeah all right all right yeah I, I noticed in the documentary you didn't really stop short at all like it was like it wasn't lazy it was very you know what I'm saying in depth you had like the entire cast and crew and um even a few surprise guests and everything like Steve and you know yeah yeah and we uh we definitely got like I mean there's so many people included in Barney so we definitely did miss some uh and some we had, unfortunately had a cut we did about like 45 different interviews and you know, two hours, you try to get as money as you can in there. Uh, but for sure, yeah, we were lucky to kind of get the murders row of um, children's programming with Bill Nye and uh, Steve from Blues Clues. We actually interviewed uh, Stick Stigley, but we couldn't put him in. <laughs> we, did, we did a Zoom with Tinky Winky, uh, but he was in Europe, so we couldn't like get him over for the, you know, during the production. Would you ever like consider putting the extra footage out, the extra interviews? That's really not my call. Well, so Tinky Winky, you know, we never like formally recorded him. We just started talking to him on Zoom, just like, a, you know, just doing research and stuff like that. He was a great dude. Uh, and then uh, we have this amazing interview with Six Stigley, but like, you know, we're interviewing real people all the time. When you interview mm -hmm. a stick, it's actual <laughs> character, you know? So it's like, you know, legally, we, we you know, we didn't, we, it was a last minute thing that we tried to do and we tried to get someone from Nickelodeon to be like, okay, but we just couldn't hear back in time. It was our fault. We should have tried to do something. It was like a last minute thing. We're like, oh, we should do Stick Stigley, you know? But yeah. we, we had the voice of Stick Stigley and I made the stick and it was it was awesome. So, Yeah, that sounds awesome. In the doc, you interviewed Andrew Olsen yeah. of uh, Barney History Fans. Yeah. Would you say that the doc is for fans of the show or like, in other words, like who's the audience that you had in mind sure. for it? Yeah, we never like, I made a documentary about Santa Claus, uh, like people who dress like Santa Claus and and the Santas were, would, at first would get upset that like we interviewed like a swinger Santa or mm -hmm. like a gay Santa or a drunk Santa. And I was like, I'm not making it for Santas. I'm making it for everyone, you know? <laughs> and for Barney, you know, like, you know, we dived into like the history of Barney to make it to make it make sense. I mean, our story was really about like why do we hate the things we hate, you know, and where does hate come from? And in so many ways, when you hate something, you dehumanize some, someone. And we it was important to us to humanize Barney in the show's creator, the voice of Barney, the body of Barney, and really humanize the people behind that. 
So it, so you do get a biography in some sense, but it doesn't go deep as, as much as the fans probably wanted. So I wouldn't say it was made for the fans. I would say the fans should appreciate it. Uh, maybe should is the wrong word. Could, can appreciate it. Um, but it definitely wasn't made for the fans. It was made for, you know, anyone really. All right, cool. Also, you interviewed the creator of the I Hate Barney Secret Society and the Barney Bashing event and Sean Breen, the leader of the Jihad to Destroy Barney. Yeah. Um, how did you find out about these groups? And when you did, did you ever fall on either side? I'm not, I'm not a judgy guy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm open to anyone's side. Just, I just listen, you know? Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so the, Sean Breen for the Jihad to Destroy Barney, Trent Johnson, my producer, he, he found him. And what we knew about the jihad because it was, if you go to like Barney's, the like actual Wikipedia page, there's a Barney, anti-Barney humor section, and they mentioned mm. the jihad. Okay. So that was funny, and I think they might have <laughs> mentioned the I Hate Barney Secret Society. All these people were actually very difficult to get to, <laughs> you know, like because there's no manager, there's no agent, you know, they're not on yeah. Facebook, still talking about it or anything like that. So it's something you really had to do this sort of research to get to, you know. I, I remember. When Rob from the I Hate Barney Secret Society said he was going to do the movie, we're like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's just like, you know, do the are these people still alive? Do they exist? You know? Yeah. Well, speaking of him, he spoke about like his struggles that he had in his personal life. And yeah. how did you feel about him being so open to uh, discuss that? Yeah. I mean, it just shows you like, I think one thing I've learned by doing this sort of thing is anytime someone says they hate something. I try to go and think, well, where is this coming from? And it's quite obvious when a, a guy creates a I, Heart Barney, uh, I Hate Barney Secret Society uh, because, you know, and he talks about in his thing about the Barney addict and the, the dysfunctional family. And, you know, and when he opens up and talks about how he was an alcoholic and he was going through a divorce, it's quite obvious he's pulling from his own life and Barney's just hitting these secure insecurities. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, his daughter loves Barney. He comes home from work, but the daughter would rather see Barney than him. You mm -hmm. know, like it's just, it's just hitting all these notes. And Bob West, the voice of Barney, he was like, you know, uh, it was never about Barney that the people hated. It was, it was all, it was like a mirror to show you what you didn't like about yourself. So yeah. it just hit all his trigger points. Okay, cool, cool. I'm sure you had a great time meeting all the people involved in the doc. Um, could you talk a little about that? Like maybe who might have been a really enjoyable person that you talked to or interviewed? Well, I mean, who doesn't love Steve Burns, right? Like that was a, that was a great, that was a great little hangout we had there. And uh, he was awesome. Meeting Bill Nye was amazing. I remember, you know, eighth grade science class, those TVs would roll in and we get to watch Bill Nye. It was a great day. Uh, but, you know, just meeting some of these these people from Barney, you know, I, I knew nothing about Barney besides that it existed when I started this. So to meet like David Voss and see how like a kind soul he is or David Joyner and how much of a unique person he is, you know, Leah, Ricky, like all these like people, um, Steve, Stephen White, the writer of uh, Barney. I mean, what an amazing person. Like he used to write for Chuck E. Cheese. He's just so funny. He's like so funny so yeah. it, was, it was great because it's like you know i you know, you do i did the bill murray stories you have an idea about bill murray you know uh mm -hmm. or i am santa claus you have an idea about like christmas but like barney i just didn't i just knew that song you know so yeah all right well i mean it came out absolutely beautiful um oh thank you no problem man um what's your history in directing like how did you get into film yeah, uh, I have a, I guess a weird history. Like I, I just had a camera, you know, like when I was 10 years old or 11 years old, me and my friends would, you know, beat up like a uh, like wrestling dummy and pretend we were WWE superstars, you know, like, mm. well at the time WWF, but like, you know, we just thought that we were funny. Then we eventually started like trying to do skits like Mad TV, you know, <laughs> we thought we were funny. Um, and eventually we tried to write, make skits and stuff like that. I, I worked in radio for a long time. Uh, I wanted to be Kevin Smith. So me and my friends sort of tried to make movies like that. Uh, eventually kind of rolled into making documentaries. You know, I, um, 
we had like produced a scripted movie called Miss December that Kevin Smith put out. And we were at a festival and Morgan Spurlock was there, you know, super size me, fame. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just had a mutual friend and I started talking to him and I was like, you know, um, I have this idea for a documentary about people who portray Santa Claus. He's like, that's a great idea, you should do it. And I kind of just took that and I just did Santa. And then I did, I produced Ghost Heads and I made the Bill Murray stories. I made Waldo and Weed. I produced this movie about Guar uh, and then Barney. And now I'm doing this other doc right now. It's called The House From. Mm. And it's all about people who live in famous houses like um, Full House, Friday, Home Alone, Uncle Buck, Twilight, all these houses. And we have a Kickstarter for it. It's called thehousefrom.com. So it was kind of just like a snowball, just like, you know, always having a camera in my hand and knowing I wanted to do something thinking I wanted to be Kevin Smith, but open to the idea of shifting that and just became my own person who made documentaries, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool. Um, I'm, I really like the idea of the house from that's That's a really nice idea. Um, I, yeah, it, that was one of those things we tried to pitch as a TV show mm -hmm. and people just didn't think there was much stakes or drama and all that sort of stuff. And we're like, forget it, we'll just do it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been to so many different houses, so it's been fun. Yeah, hopefully when that comes out, we can have you back to do yeah, another interview. And I mean, uh, in Atlanta, you you probably uh, probably uh, you know probably have like all the uh, Stranger Things, the locations and all that sort of stuff, right? Uh, yeah, I think they are. I I haven't seen them personally, but okay, I, I believe so. Somewhere in Georgia, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have like um, I know we have. I don't know, you know, Medea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I have Diary like... of a Black Woman somewhere around here. <laughs> yeah, I think the house that's in that. That movie is in Atlanta. Um, I guess you know, his, the show Atlanta probably films there too, right? I, I, I believe so. I That's believe a great so. show. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't had the opportunity to watch it yet, but I've been wanting yeah. to look into it. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> first two seasons are right up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I look forward to your up and coming, uh, your upcoming projects. And I really look forward to The House From. That one sounds right. like so amazing to me. Um, do you have any other upcoming projects after or? Uh, you know? I was supposed to be producing something next after that, but you know, I, I, met, I was on a podcast once and I started mentioning like stuff that like almost was about to happen and it didn't happen. So I feel like I jinxed mm. myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah, man, I just uh, keep hustling and keep trying to do stuff. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's Barney's out now The I love you, you hate me on Peacock and then the house from.com. We're doing that and I'll probably be out beginning of next year and then yeah just a couple other things we're pitching and putting together so all right cool well i wish you the absolute best on your future yeah, endeavors um is there any like uh social media or anything that you want to shout out sure well i mean uh it's my name but i don't know uh, uh it's tommy avalone a-v-a-l-l-o-n-e three and i'm uh that's on instagram and twitter so yeah I mean, instagram's my thing twitter whatever you know but like <laughs> Uh, I got the blue check, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much. I really thank appreciate you. you coming through. And how do you say your name? Oh, Michelangelo Parker. Oh, Michelangelo. Okay. Nice. So like the turtle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. Yes, awesome, sir. man. We'll keep in touch. This was fun. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, too. All right. See you, buddy. All right. Special thanks to Tommy Avalone for doing this interview. He was an amazing guest. It was awesome to have him, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, we can have him back soon. One thing that we can do to make sure that that happens is if you guys go and support the Kickstarter for The House From and let him and everyone else know that you support this project and that you do want to see it. Also, go check out I Love You, You Hate Me on Peacock right now. Once again, special thanks to Tommy Avalone, and thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know who you want me to interview next. Let me know who you would like to see on the show. And also click that bell icon to make sure that you get notified the next time that I release a new video. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.